Do you want to check out IT Pro TV but aren't ready to commit? We're making a few episodes from our most popular courses free for you to try here on YouTube so you can see what they're all about. Enjoy this episode and head over to itpro.tv when you're ready to see the full course. You've been tasked with determining what the current threats are out in the wild. Do you know what sources to check? Stay tuned to find out. You're watching IT Pro TV. Thank you for tuning in to IT Pro TV, and we are talking intelligence sources today. Now, Dan, I have to tell you, I've heard this term OSINT, right? Uh, are we talking a new Linux distro? No, oh, I wish. I love new <laughs> Linux distros. They're always a good time because who knows what kooky thing they put in there. But no, OSINT, it stands for Open Source Intelligence. And if you are that analyst that has been tasked with trying to figure out what your threat uh, surface looks like, your attack surface, what are the threats that could, what are, my, what are our risks? How can we do that? OSINT is a great way to do that because when you're threat modeling, guess what? That's what attackers are going to do. They're going to look at what, because what do we mean by OSINT, right? What we mean is what openly disseminated information about our organization is out there for people to know, right? That's, that's the idea behind OSINT, open source. We want you to know this. Maybe if you've got, uh, if your company has a website, it's very common nowadays. Also a very common thing is on that website, maybe there's an about us page uh, maybe meet the staff, that kind of thing. It starts to tell you about your organization, the people that work there. Now, there's other places you could go, things like job listings, other great places to, uh, to grab some open source intelligence because then I can start looking into what kind of technologies are you using because if you're hiring in IT, hey, here's the, uh, we need a systems administrator that is prolific in Windows administration, Azure Cloud, maybe a little Linux, Apache, oh, I'm starting to get an idea of the technologies that are being used in your organization. That's what an attacker would do. So that's what we need to do as a security specialist for that organization to figure out what information are we leaking out to the world so that we know or have a better idea of where threats might come from. So that's, that's the idea. Now, that being said, how do we do that? Well, you can, you can manually start looking and you should do that kind of thing. You should check your job listings and see what you have available that's out there in the world. Look at your website, look at what kind of information is available. But that is time intensive and time consuming. So good news is, is we love automation in uh, uh, IT and for good reason, it makes things go fast and easy or at least easier. And uh, so this is no stranger to that. We had a couple of tools that we can leverage to help us with OSINT. A couple of them that specifically that have been called out for by CompTIA which will be, well, we'll start with the Harvester. The Harvester is a great tool, gathers a lot of information. Let's jump into my computer, take a look at what that looks like. If I just type in the Harvester, it's probably gonna yell at me. Oh, here we go, yeah. Say, so, hey, you forgot a few options, but that's what I want. And it gives you a few of the things that you need, especially the following arguments are required, a dash D or dash dash domain, letting me know this is the domain I want you to look for. And what I'll do is I will uh, just type in the harvester, harvester, harvester. There we go. I can type. I can do it. Dash D, and I'll use IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV. Another one that's really good to use is this dash B for your sources. So I do a dash B. I can give it a list of sources. You can go into further documentation of this to see what sources are available for. But I'm going to use why not Bing, uh, and it's just comma separated Google. And I'll throw LinkedIn on the fire, not fire, LinkedIn, <laughs> typing what I'm saying. There we go. I was going to fire up. Now, this will take a second for it to run, but it's going to give us a lot of really good information once it's finished. Now, Dan, so I can imagine that uh, we've got a lot of different options here, and this has got some kind of built-in engine that it's using. Uh, and I know there's a lot of different networking utilities that do this. So what kind of output uh, can we expect to see in something like this? Yeah, the Harvester typically looks for things like email addresses that are associated with that domain. If it's looking into LinkedIn, it's going to find any kind of uh, uh, reference to IT Pro TV and try to pull that back as a result. Also, you it will also look for uh, what's called subdomains, if we have any kind of subdomain activity. So we got itpro.tv, maybe we've got dev.itpro.tv or um, production.itpro.tv, that kind of thing, where you have subdomains that'll look for those as well and see if it can grab any information out of that. Always good information for us to just, again, see what it is that we are putting out to the wild. As we can see that the Harvester is now complete 
And we are seeing things like, oh, there's an email address, Valerie at itpro.tv. Wes and I both know Val. She is our head of our marketing. Cool. I found somebody. Maybe I didn't know that person. Maybe I wasn't realizing that her email is probably pretty ubiquitous because they, they handle a lot of marketing for us since that's what they do. We have a couple of IP addresses for IT Pro TV. We've got forums.itprotv right here. Got a www. And then the IP addresses that are associated with that. Good info right there letting me know these would be in scope for me if I were a threat actor to come after this company or if I were a security person, now I know what is being shown to the wild. And of course, this is our LinkedIn results. We see Val again showing up right there, director of marketing. We see Tyler, he is a customer success manager. And you'll see a Tim Broom, right? We got a lot of Tim Brooms in there, but uh, <laughs> he's the boss, right? Uh, and as you can see, lots of stuff came back from LinkedIn. I can start now to build a profile of IT Pro TV to understand what kind of business associations maybe we have because they've been referenced in this through LinkedIn. Again, not the only sources, plenty of other sources for um, the harvester to look through, but those were just simple, easy wins for us to kind of look and see what might be out there in a while to show off for the camera here. Now, not the only tool in the tool bag. We also have a cool tool called Shodan. Shodan is a great tool. I'm gonna jump over here. I've got their website open. Shodan can basically look for just about anything on the internet. If it's connected to the internet, Shodan is trying to make an index or a list of it or will search for it and find you all sorts of stuff. You can have a lot of fun with Shodan. I highly recommend that you get a, um, a login for this. It is a free utility to some extent. Uh, you can get a free key for it or a free login that will give you a little more activity. And then if you wanna pay for service, it'll give you keys to the kingdom from what Shodan can do, which is a lot. It's really not that expensive. So if you are engaged in this activity, I highly recommend you spend in the cheddar, right, to get that resource. So let's just type in some stuff and see what happens. Let's take a look. If I go up here in the search, you can see it's giving me a drop down for stuff I've already searched for. But I'm gonna do uh, uh, a filtered search. I'm gonna do org colon, and I'll say Sony, because I know it's gonna have some results. And here we go, we have a lot of results from Sony. Let's see if I can't blow that up a little better so we can kind of play around with it. And we see this is Sony Pictures Corporation. We got a 302 not found for an SSL certificate. But you can see it's giving us a bit of information about this that it's running Apache. All right, that's good information I need to know. Are there any Apache exploits that I need to be aware of if I'm the security personnel that works for Sony? We know that they've had trouble in the past, so this is probably something they should be doing, right? Understanding where their vulnerabilities may lie. I'm getting great intelligence right here just from doing a Shodan search to start pointing myself toward Apache. Okay, I know that people can see that we have Apache servers. I need to make sure that they are as tight as they can be when it comes to our security, the versioning, patching, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, IP addresses that are associated with it. This is Sony Network Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Limited. And we're seeing the HTTP headers. This is a 200, so I actually got there. And you can click on these links and it will take you to further information. You can see it's running on port 8080. HTTP simple new, so that's interesting. That lets me know that it's not running Apache or Nginx probably. It's running some other version of HTTP, but it does seem to be working very well. And I'm getting host names, IP addresses, a lot of great stuff associated with. Now I can start really fleshing out my profile for our company if I did work for Sony and to see what is available for, and this is open source intelligence. It's freely available, anybody could grab this information. That's awesome, too, because you can see uh, I would be maybe able to deduce as well that if they're running a uh, Apache, those of you that are from the Linux world or maybe the server administration world know they're probably running a LAMP stack. So you could probably base that on and do additional. Now, I know that that's out there in the wild, Dan. I know it seemed like a pretty easy lift, but it's not always so easy. So the opposite of open, I would say, is closed. And my question is, what happens if we're guarding all those keys to the kingdom and it's proprietary? How would we attack it from that vector? Yeah, that's a great question because there is information that is closed source that we would not want. It may be proprietary to our organization that we wouldn't want people to know and we should not be disseminating out for the public at large. This kind of stuff is, while could be useful to an attacker, isn't, isn't a, a huge burden. We just need to be aware that that's out there. Now, if things like financial information or intellectual property, that kind of stuff, we definitely do not want running around in the wild, 
that would be considered closed source. That would be considered proprietary. And to Wes's question of how would I get that information? Well, in good old fashioned ways, right? Uh, one thing is that we can do is maybe human intelligence. Go back to that. Go back to, I am going to engage in some form of espionage. I'm going to engage in asset gathering to where I will approach people that work for that company in various and sundry ways to try to elicit that information from them, maybe through a friendly conversation, maybe through blackmail or pressure of some sorts. If I were a threat actor, that's how I would approach that. Now, how do we do it as a security personnel? Well, we just need to be aware of what our closed source intelligence is. What are those things? And then we need to be looking for them out in the wild. We need to be uh, understanding maybe Bob in accounting isn't as happy with his job and he has access to financial information. Insider threats are a really real thing. So you just have to be checking out there in the wild using open source intelligence to see if any closed source intelligence is running around out there. Now, a threat actor, like I said, would probably be using human intelligence. Um, they could also acquire it via the dark web. Maybe you've been compromised and don't know it. And intellectual property or sensitive information about your organization has been gathered. A lot of times that stuff is sold on the dark web. Every now and then it doesn't hurt to peruse those areas in a safe way to see if any, again, if any of your closed source information is lurking about in there. Surveillance would be another great way. Is that you know, Dan, uh, let me let me stop you there real quick because I got a concept that's in my mind, and I don't know if it applies to this. But reconnaissance, how does reconnaissance and surveillance kind of tie in? Because it almost seems like it would be the same. Yeah, they are they are very closely related. Uh, I would say that reconnaissance is more of the umbrella term of gathering information, where surveillance would be a part of doing reconnaissance. So yes, extremely connected, uh, and I could see where you would see them as a synonymous term because they are, and, and even could be used interchangeably in, in some circles. So uh, very good question though, because there is a bit of a difference, but not a whole lot. So great surveillance is, is, is a good way to go to gather some of that closed source information. Now I know this just by paying attention to things like the media and public knowledge there that not everything is really good sources of information. So I have to ask you, what are the attributes or the qualities of intelligence? How do we determine, is it good or is it bad? Yeah, that, that's also a great question because there's gonna be a lot of info out there that could be useful, could not be useful. How do we know? How do we know what's good? There's a couple of attributes like, like Wes has uh, mentioned there that could help you understand what is going to be useful for you as a security professional. One of them is gonna be that there, it's timeliness, that it is in, uh, within relative time of what's going on. Of course, that's gonna be up to you to figure out whether or not that what that timeliness looks like is very subjective according to your organization and what you're looking for and how that works out. But it needs to have that air of, this is still has a usefulness to me because it is within the scope of being still relevant. So maybe an archive page of a company from 10 years ago, while might have some information in it, probably not going to be likely if that company's pivoted it in any way from whatever they're offering. Yeah, exactly. It could be that they've completely, we'll take our company, for example, IT Pro TV, when we started, we were a WordPress shop. We just ran everything on WordPress because we weren't very big at the time. And that was a great platform for getting off the ground. Now that we're, what, six years into this? Is that, is that where we're at now at this point? We have definitely evolved into newer and more modern technologies and more um, heavier technologies that will help guide and, and uh, make our site useful to people. WordPress ceased to be as useful to us as it once was. We needed a little more uh, horsepower underneath the, underneath the hood. So yes, that, that's a great uh, example for that. Another one will be relevancy, right? Kind of moving from timely, timeliness into relevancy, because if it is timely, it is probably also relevant. That information needs to be relevant to you and not just in a timeliness factor. If I'm running Apache web servers, it doesn't make sense for me to have threat feeds come in about IIS because it's not relevant to my organization. So we need to wade through the things that we don't need and only focus on the things that we do need. So that's gonna help with making sure that we are getting at, uh, the things that we need when it comes out of uh, what is good intelligence. So we wanna find some good websites and things of that nature. And that moves us right into our next one, which is basically the reliability or what we call accuracy of 
the information itself. So all this information needs to be timely, it needs to be relevant to you, and it needs to be accurate. Find some good, reliable threat feeds, threat intelligence feeds about the technologies that you are using and about your company so that it is actually useful to you as far as threat modeling your organization. So there you go. That's intelligence sources. We walked through a couple of different things. Open source intelligence. Don't forget closed source intelligence. Make sure that your proprietary information isn't lingering out there on the web. And of course, making sure your threat feeds are timely, accurate, and relevant to your organization. Wes? All right, I tell you what, this has been a great episode. And like Dan says, unlike the information we're giving you here, not all information is good information, but keep in mind we've got more to come in the SISA Plus certification course, and we hope to see you in those upcoming episodes. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV. Thank you.